I'm Dr. Anjani Devi, Associate Professor, Department of Biotechnology, Vignans Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. As you pretty well know that I'm dealing with the course Enzyme Technology. We have completed three units of this Enzyme Technology and we are now moving towards Unit 4. So now, we are going to discuss about adsorption technique. First thing is, we are going to discuss about the non-specific adsorption. So, this is the simplest immobilization method as we told, we have already discussed that this adsorption technique is the simplest method. So, this is the simplest immobilization method and it is non-specific adsorption which is mainly based upon the physical adsorption or ionic bonding. The, the physical adsorption involves the very weak bonds which are nothing but the hydrogen bonds, van der Waals forces, hydrophobic interactions. But, what are the bonds involved in this? Ionic bonding, there is a linkage, so there are nothing but your salt linkages are involved in the ionic bonding. The nature of forces involved in the non-covalent immobilization, we are calling this adsorption technique as non-covalent because we does not have any covalent bonds present between the matrix as well as the enzyme. This is a non-covalent immobilization technique. So the nature of forces involved in this non-covalent immobilization technique results in a process which can be reversed. So you can easily break these weak bonds that are present between your carrier and enzyme. So, you can get your enzyme revert back. So, you can easily revert back your enzyme, separate your enzyme from your carrier by changing certain conditions such as pH or ionic strength, temperature or polarity of the solvent. If you change the properties of the solvent, if you change the pH, temperature, polarity of the solvent, you can get back your separate, you can separate your carrier from your enzyme. So, immobilization by adsorption is a mild, easy and, and, and it is a mild process, it is an easy to perform process and it usually preserves the catalytic activity. As I have told you that they are the enzyme is bound with the carrier with the weak bonds, there will not be any loss of catalytic activity of your enzyme. Such methods are therefore economical. Why we are calling the method as economical because your enzyme activity is not lost. So, you can use the enzyme number of times. So, you can use the same enzyme for the next batch also. And the problem with this is you have leakage problems as you, your enzyme is easy, easily leaked from your matrix because it is bound with very weak bonds. Coming to the specific adsorption, this method is very simple and reversible method but in general it is difficult to find conditions under which this enzyme remains both strongly bound and fully active. These two properties are hard to find at the same place. See, if at all your enzyme is strongly bound, then definitely the enzyme activity is going to be lost. So, if it is loosely bound, the enzyme is leaked out, but activity of the enzyme is stabilized. It's very problematic for us in order to find these both the characters at a place. And the use of this immobilized polymeric Ionic ligands have allowed to modulate the interaction between the protein and the matrix and thus to optimize the properties of the derivative. Moreover, the problems may arise from the use of highly charged support when the substrate or the products are there. I told you that the carrier should be free from charge. If at all the carrier is also charged and, you, and your enzyme is also charged, there will be some kinetic problems. So, the kinetics are distorted due to partition or the diffusion phenomena. Therefore, the enzyme properties such as its optimum pH or the pH stability range may change drastically in this particular situation. Coming to the hydrophobic adsorption, the interactions formed by the displacement of the water molecule from the support surface material and the enzyme molecule surface during the immobilization as a result of entropy gain. Here, how this process is taking place? See, whenever your enzyme is getting bound with your carrier, during this hydrophobic adsorption process, there is a displacement of water from the surface of your matrix and the enzyme and there will be resulting in the entropy gain. The interaction strength heavily depends upon the hydrophobicity. As you can say that it is a hydrophobic adsorption. What is the main character for the successful immobilization? It is nothing but the 
hydrophobicity of bone absorbent and the enzyme here the absorbent means your carrier the successful immobilization of your enzyme in this hydrophobic adsorption depends upon the hydrophobicity of your enzyme as well as your carrier experimental variations such as ph temperature and concentration of salt during the enzyme immobilization size of the hydrophobic ligand and the degree of the support substitution could be adjusted to regulate the hydrophobic interactions between your enzyme and the support so in order to have a proper binding of your enzyme towards the support through this hydrophobic adsorption you can change the various parameters such as ph temperature concentration of your salt along with size of your hydrophobic ligand and the degree of support substitution so by varying this parameters you can get good bonding good hydrophobic interactions between your enzyme and your matrix successful examples of reversible immobilization by hydrophobic adsorption onto hexyl agarose carrier has been reported for beta amylase so already few scientists have worked upon this hydrophobic adsorption technique they have used hexyl agarose as a carrier and they have immobilized the enzyme beta amylase and amyloglucosidase so they have succeeded in immobilizing beta amylase and amyloglucosidase upon hydroxyl agarose carrier now i'll just focus upon what is this affinity binding so wherever you take you get across the word affinity binding or affinity chromatography in anything the principle is the same so in order to have a bond between two compounds they should be having complementarity they should be having affinity with one another the same principle can be used here in order to have a proper adsorption of your enzyme onto your carrier see the principle of affinity between the complementarity biomolecules has been applied to the enzyme immobilization also so the remarkable selectivity of interaction is a major benefit of this method however the procedure often requires the covalent binding of costly affinity ligand to the matrix see here what's happening is a support is available and your enzyme is available in order to bind this support to your enzyme one ligand is inserted so with the help of a ligand your enzyme is getting bound to your support molecule we require a covalent binding of a costly affinity ligand to the matrix so in this particular affinity binding you require a ligand which will be binding to the support and on one side it is binding to your matrix and other side it is binding to your enzyme so this process requires a costly ligand molecule coming to various advantages and disadvantages of this adsorption technique as you pretty well know it is very simple and economical technique and as the enzyme is weakly bound to your matrix you won't be having the loss of your enzyme and the enzyme can be easily reused and recycled and it can be regenerated and coming to the negative aspect or the disadvantages of this particular technique relatively low surface area for binding as there is a low surface area for binding you can load a lot of enzyme onto the carrier and exposure of enzyme to the microbial attack so your enzyme is going to get contaminated due to microbial attack moreover the yields are often low due to inactivation and desorption see here it's a just an adsorption technique here you have a solid support to that directly your enzyme is linked with the help of weak bonds if you consider ionic binding you have a support your enzyme is linked with the help of some salt bridges if you consider affinity binding you have your support you have your enzyme both of them are linked with one another with the help of a ligand if you consider metal binding you have a support you have an enzyme both of them are linked with the help of a metal and most of the metals used are transition metal salts or hydroxides disulfide bonds here if you see you have a support 
you have the enzymes which are linked with one another by disulfide linkages. Though a stable covalent bond is involved in the formation of this immobilization process, it can be broken by reaction within a suitable reagent which is nothing but your DTT, dithiotrital. So by using your DTT, you are going to break the covalent bonds. So now we are going to discuss about your entrapment method. So what is the entrapment method? Here the entrapment method is defined as an irreversible method. So it is a irreversible method. When you compare to your adsorption which is a reversible method, here we are saying that entrapment is a irreversible method. And enzymes are entrapped in a support or inside a fiber either in the lattice structure of the material or in the polymer membrane that allows the substrate and the product to pass through but retains the enzyme. See here you can see two types of your immobilization. It is called as entrapment. Here the enzyme is entrapped within a lattice between the fibers or it can, it can also be entrapped within a droplets or within the gel. This is called as encapsulation. This is nothing but your entrapment and encapsulation is one type of entrapment only. So this here your enzyme is entrapped within the fibers. Here your enzyme is encapsulated within the gel. Entrapment is also described as a physical restriction of your enzyme within a confined space or network. Okay. And now it can be classified into lattice as well as a microcapsular method. I have told you that this can be classified into lattice as well as the microcapsule type. If at all you are using the gels, what are the different types of the gels or the, what is the various materials that can be used in order to prepare the gels. You can use polyacrylamide gels or polyvinyl alcohol gels. In order to entrap your enzyme in fibers, what are the chemicals that can be used for the preparation of fibers? It is nothing but you can use cellulose. And then in order to enclose your enzyme within a microcapsule, you can use the matrix made up of polyamines, polybasic acid chlorides, monomers, etc. So as I told you, one of the type of entrapment is nothing but a lattice type of entrapment. Entrapment involves entrapping the enzyme within the interstitial spaces of a cross-linked water insoluble polymers. Water insoluble lattice is present. This is your support and port and your enzyme is getting entrapped within the interstitial spaces, the spaces that is present between the fibers. So, your enzyme is getting entrapped between the interstitial spaces of your fibers. Some synthetic polymers such as polyacrylamide, polyvinyl alcohols, etc. And natural polymers such as starch can also be used for immobilizing the enzyme under this particular technique. In case of this microcapsular type of this entrapment or encapsulation, it involves a closing of the enzymes within a semi-permeable polymer. Just see this. We have taken a semi-permeable polymer and you have entrapped your enzyme within that semi-permeable polymer. And the examples of semi-permeable polymers are, we can take the semi-permeable collodion or nylon membranes in the shape of spears in order to entrap your enzymes in the case of your encapsulation. So, what are the various matrix that can be used for this encapsulation method? It is nothing but you can use alginate, carrageenan, collagen, polyacrylamide, gelatin, silicon, rubber, polyurethane, polyvinyl alcohols, etc. All these materials can be used as matrix for your entrapment methods. Among that, you can mostly use this alginate. It is having mild gelling properties and these are non-toxic. And what are the various advantages of this entrapment method? It can improve the mechanical stability as these enzymes are present within the matrix, there will not be any strong bond formed between the matrix and your enzyme. So, your stability of your enzyme will be present. So, improve the mechanical stability as well as minimize the enzyme leakage. Moreover, denaturation of your enzyme is obviously avoided. And the method permits the 
ability to modify the encapsulating material. The ideal micro environment could be optimum pH, polarity and amphilicity. This can be achieved with a variety of materials including polymers, solgels, etc. So what are the advantages of this method? By using this method you can have your enzyme stable, you can have the enzyme stability, you can have your enzyme without leaching out, you can have your enzyme without denaturation. So these are the very important properties. Moreover, you can go for the modification of the encapsulating material by changing these properties like optimum pH, polarity, etc. What are the disadvantages of this particular method? So there will be limitations with this mass transfer. Obviously, we are having mass transfer limitations and the possibility of the enzyme leakage is more. Moreover, deactivation may take place during immobilization and loading of enzyme will be low. So, these are the few disadvantages which are present with entrapment method. Coming to the summary of the topic, in this session we have learnt about what is enzyme immobilization, what is a carrier, what are the properties of an ideal carrier? What are the various immobilization techniques? In that we have studied about different physical techniques such as adsorption as well as entrapment. In that entrapment we have another sort of technique which is also called as encapsulation which is a part and particle of entrapment. So along with that we have studied about the disadvantages and advantages of your adsorption as well as your entrapment techniques. So I want you people to work out on these questions in order to assess Yes sir, how far you have understood from today's class. I have referred all these materials for this particular topic and I want you people also to refer these references. Thank you.